Hello, my name is Matthew Randall. I am a biochemistry student at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Today, I will be showing you how to perform a base extraction experiment with an emphasis on technique and safety. Before beginning, it's important to have the proper protective equipment, including your, your lab coat, buttoned up, safety goggles, gloves, pants, and closed-toed shoes. For the first step of the purification technique, I will be dissolving 2 grams of the unknown compound with 30 ml of ether before transferring it to the separatory funnel. We will transfer the unknown compound into the beaker and we will dissolve with ether. Ether is a volatile solvent and evaporates, so it is important to keep it inside the fume hood. And now we will stir. Once the unknown has been dissolved, you can proceed to transfer it to the separatory funnel. Before proceeding, it is important to make sure that your equipment is properly secured, such as the separatory funnel attached to a ring clamp with a funnel on top. Make sure the separatory funnel is closed so that the bar is perpendicular with the funnel and have a labeled base extract beaker beneath. I will be performing two separate base extractions. Upon each addition of 10% sodium hydroxide, we will shake, vent, and then drain into the labeled beaker. Sodium hydroxide was selected as the extracting solvent because it will deprotonate the carboxylic acid, forming a salt that is soluble in the aqueous layer. The two separated layers are now immiscible, and sodium hydroxide is present in the aqueous layer. When shaking and venting, it is important to make sure that the stopcock is closed and you have a finger secured over the lid. Notice how two visible layers are present. The carboxylic acid, once deprotonated, leaves the organic layer because its conjugate base now favors the aqueous layer. The greater density of the base extract causes it to appear beneath the organic layer. If you are unsure which layer is which, add water and examine which layer gains volume. Before draining the lower layer, Remove the stopper from the top and then get eye level with the two layers. We will extract with another 15 mils because extraction works best when you repeat. Pour the remaining organic layer out of the top of the funnel into your labeled neutral organic beaker. Next, I'll be adding anhydrous sodium sulfate to the organic layer to remove any water. Add the anhydrous sodium sulfate until there are no clumps visible.
We will set the neutral organic aside and neutralize the base extract with 25 ml of 3 molar HCl. The hydrochloric acid will donate a proton to the salt and therefore reform benzoic acid. The resulting compound is no longer soluble in the aqueous layer. You will see the crystals have formed. Now we will check the pH. Using a glass stir rod, dab a little bit onto your pH paper and then compare it to the container to see that it is acidic. Once the base extract is at room temperature, place it in an ice bath and set a timer for 10 minutes. More precipitate will continue to form as the base extract cools. While the timer is running, secure your vacuum flask with the clamp and attach the Buchner funnel to the top. Make sure that there's filter paper inside. Add a few drops of DI water to wet the filter paper. And then secure the hose to the flask. With the vacuum on, pour the base extract onto the filter paper. Use a spatula to scrape out whatever crystals remain. Now we will dry the crystals beneath the heat lamp. First, turn off the vacuum. Remove the funnel and use a spatula to scrape the crystals onto a watch glass or dish. Let the crystals dry beneath the heat lamp. Slowly decant the neutral organic into a newly labeled beaker. Careful not to pour any of the sodium sulfate with it. Pull the hood sash down. And using the airline, blow at an angle to evaporate the ether. As the ether evaporates, more solids will form. Once the crystals are abundantly present, use a spatula to scrape them onto the watch glass. Leave the solids under the heat lamp to dry. Using a melting point capillary tube, we will obtain some of the product to determine the melting point. The tube has two ends, one open and one closed. Invert the tube so that the open end goes into the solid. Turn the tube back over and tap it so the product falls down to the closed end. With two melting point capillary tubes, we will obtain both the neutral organic and the carboxylic acid. We will use the melt temp apparatus to determine the melting point. Once you've obtained your melting points, you can proceed to determine the identities of your unknown carboxylic acid and neutral organic compound.